Hello, my name is Musa Hawk, and I'm coming from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Wow. So it really started in my early 20s, so I saw a light spot. And um, my friends, we would make fun of uh, each other. We call it the LeBron James, because when he started receding, we would call it the LeBron James. And I saw that early, you know, when I was getting the dye haircuts and stuff. And it wasn't, I'm 34 now. It wasn't until I turned about 31, and I was like, I started just wearing do-rags and covering my head a lot. And I wanted to do something, but COVID happened. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, a lot of things seemed skeptical when I was doing it. A lot of YouTube videos, everything's just so normal with the camera now. You never know what's truthful and what's honest. So I did a lot of research and I, when I clicked on hair transplants that specialize in African-American men, they went straight to Turkey and Istanbul and you guys here. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna put that to the side. And um, I kept doing a lot of research and they kept referring me here. And I'm like, all right, number one in the Turkey country, an Instable hair transplant, back to you. I'm like, all right, I gotta go for it. Yeah, so I looked on, uh, I saw some like extractions on how the process is done. I don't know if it was, specifically uh, hair of Instable, but I saw some extractions, how it would work and how the procedure goes. And I was like, you know what, let me check out their page. I went, to, I did a lot of scrolling and I was, I'm talking about, I was scrolling through the year 2020 to see how everything was processed, everything was the same. I seen you had different people from multi-cultures, it didn't matter who it was. So, and you have women as well. And I'm like, okay, these guys are legit. I'm gonna give them a try. I'm gonna send them a message on Instagram. And, um, and I heard you guys were very high in demand and I was fortunate to reach to be, you guys to contact me back as fast as you did. All right, so yeah, so like, and um, I don't, in the US or in, we have this wave committee group where your hair looks curly, the, the texture of your hair, you know, social media is just really ex explosive when it comes to people's hair about the waves that they have, the specific types of do-rags, and stuff like I was in those groups, but I never really participated in them. So I, you know, I maybe once in a blue, I would post a video up or a video, well not a video, but a picture of my hair when my waves when I was a little younger. And then it was like, you know, I would get haircuts all the time, every week, every week. Of course, with the dye itself, and I didn't know and understand that that was really stripping my hair follicles and stripping the roots of it, and it was thinning my hair as well. And um, I still was getting it, so as I was losing my hair, I'm like, all right, the dye is perfect for me. <laughs> and um, what was I wrong? So gradually I just started transitioning to do-rags more often, more often. I'm talking two days a week to every day at work. When I'm at the job, I would take it off when I was at the job, but it, came, it became full-time, it was a part of me. I don't go nowhere without it. I didn't go, I started getting different color do-rags and then more and more people started not seeing my hair. You know, if I was going out with dating, no one started to see my hair and everybody would ask me. Now, as far as dating, I would try to get a haircut and have the barber level it up as much as possible. But as far as like hanging out with my friends, they would just, you know, they wanted to know like, what's, what's going on? Like, no, nah, I just don't do it. I made up the excuses though. It's like, I only do it when I want to go out. And when I do go out, my haircut would be arranged and you know they can never see they would never know because the waves would it was it was difficult i just got tired of wearing it i just got tired of wearing it and i'm like you know what i'm tired of doing the maintenance myself certain days when i just you know the haircut wears off i would be in the i would just order stuff online not topic but this something else is called um pure thick or something like that. It was different types of, like, it was actual natural hair follicles, but if you sweat too much or if it's too moisture, okay. it becomes super dark. That was another thing. I was like, I can't, I'm doing too much going, I'm, it's too much going on, and I was like, that's not working, and this is not working. And back in my early 20s, I invested in something called the laser comb. It was like $350. I bought that, I purchased that, and I started using it. It actually showed results, but you had to really keep at it for about 20 to 30 minutes. My hand was getting tired. It started breaking up on me. It was on his last leg and it pretty much broke. And um, it, it showed results, but like I said, you had to keep at it for 30 minutes. 
and I was with a, a lady friend at the time, so she would do it for me. <laughs> um, but she, it was small, it was slow progress on the, the especially LeBron James corners. <laughs> That's what we call them, the LeBron James corners. And um, yeah, I, I came a long way. I came a long way. So I just decided to let's, let's just go for the hair transplant. Let me save some money up. And I'm off in the summertime. I work for the school district and we're off in the summer. So this was the best solution for me. And I just went for it. Um, no complaints. Uh, it's just a bathroom thing. Well, I didn't have a problem. I mean, of course you guys were gonna let me go to the bathroom, but I didn't know if I wanted to break the flow of everyone's working during the procedure. Everybody's flowing and doing their job consistently. And I was like, all right, bathroom. So that was like, I think I, I counted, I think I went to the bathroom about like six times. I don't want, I wouldn't consider that a complaint. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to uh, really be a burden on the people who were doing the procedure on my head. But other than that, everything was smooth. The, uh, the anesthesia needles went perfectly smooth. I, I was pretty much knocked out majority of the time. Um, when I was doing my research, I, you know, you want to go for quality. You want to go for quality and, and there's so much streaming going on. So much real, so much fake. And um, I saw like sometimes the recreation of certain hairline through videos that I've saw some people who had their hair cut lower. Some people's looked at like artificial, not just natural, like their natural hair, even though they're coming from there. So I wanted to go with my, my gut, my instinct, my gut, and say I'm just gonna go with the one in Turkey, Air of Instable, and that's what I'm going for. I have, overall, I'm having a good experience out here, and I wanna recommend everybody that this is what you should do, because I'm saying it, and back in the States, everybody knows who I am. I'm a talker, but when I talk, it's really official. So, do as I say. <laughs>